Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the FTD Virtual Design Show titled Home for the Holidays with Ann, featuring FTD Education Consultant Ann Jordan, AIFD. This design show series is a way to keep us all connected, be inspired, and share knowledge and solutions to solve problems. The holidays are a time of family and tradition. We are excited to welcome Ann live today from the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina to share the latest trends in floral accents for home decor and a few survival skills to help us get through the holidays. Once Anne is finished with their presentation, we will open up the session for questions. If you have a question, simply type it in that chat box that's in the toolbar at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to submit your questions during the session and the session will be recorded. So let's get started, everyone. Welcome, Anne. Hey, Janet. Thank you so much. I'll tell you what, um, when Janet asked me if I would do uh, the Christmas session uh, for these virtual design shows, I said that works perfectly because I work for an Evergreens company. So I am right now, I wish we could have done this outside because it's so beautiful where I work. I am one mile from the Blue Ridge Parkway that way and the sun sets this way. It's just rolling hills and rolling hills. And my home here that the Bonnelly's, um, the Bonnelly family lets me use is right in the middle of a boxwood field. They're, they're a big provider of uh, boxwood. And so I'm here with my assistant, Nayeli. And uh, she and I work, she's a, a designer as well at Bonnelly's. And so she'll, she'll peek around the corner corner eventually and introduce herself. And so um, I thought I'd start off with um, something that I always like to do in my floristry is something that's trans seasonal. So something that you can start right now or close to uh, Thanksgiving time and start working in some of your Christmas greens and give people an idea of the kind of work that you're going to be doing for the holiday. Uh, this first vignette that I'm going to put together for you is um, inspired by the trend report provided by Florist Review Magazine. Keith White, AIFD, works on that. And um, there, was, there was one, if you, if you attended boot camp with me the last four weeks, um, welcome back. I'm glad to see you. This is the other side of my living room. And, um, and so I was really inspired by the last trend that we talked about, which was called territorial. And territorial, I, if I remember right, when the very first trend report came out, it was very similar in that it was blues, green, blues to lavenders, but it certainly had green in it. And it was called chlorophyll. And in watching these trends from now, what, probably 20 years, so probably 10 editions of it, that look has always stayed strong. And you can kind of picture the demographic they're going for with that. And so I decided to do some real negative work for this in the idea of transseasonal. Um, in uh, boot camp, somebody said, well, how would you work that into the holiday? So I said, I'll do it for you. Just, um, just watch me. And so this is a little container. Actually, I found it in the design room uh, here in North Carolina for bottom lease. And it started off with um, Knut Nielsen sent me a nice surprise package, a beautiful, beautiful product. This is Angel Vine that I just twisted around took no time at all, a little nest, a bird's nest. And so I'm calling this vegative. And so vegative means as you would find it in nature. So starting with the nest round and around and around, I've mixed the calla lilies, these beautiful, beautiful roses and kind of a dusty lavender. Magnolia is really important. Some uh, pheasant feathers, allium, and um, the beautiful little snowberries. And um, we're gonna take great pictures of these for you too, but if you, you can see how it just goes around and around and around. And it's in the birch box, so which is very vegative in itself too. I like, I, I like um, textures. Uh, I love to sew and anything with, um, with fiber. And so very frequently I'll add things like yarn into my work and it adds just a little bit of uh, da dangling like icicles would be. And so here's the nice, sweet little negative piece. This mantle, this one goes on the other side. Okay, so this is negative as well. Now, um, stem placements are really important when you're training designers, and so. With this one, it's usually the this is the type of work that I was known for, uh, being very vertical and having all my stem placements going straight up rather than radiate from a center binding point. This really set me off from the, uh, everybody else um, that was in my delivery area, and so I love the negative work. 
also when I'm working with a vignette, I tend to use all the same materials throughout four or five different design styles. This enables me to um, have bulk buying, which is really important. So here again, you can see uh, there all the placements were going around and around and around, very circular in nature. We're here, the majority of what's going on with this is everything is vertical and looking straight up. Um, parallel placements. And so when we talk about our placements, they're either parallel or they're radiating from a center binding point or they can be very, very random. And so here you can see it's very, very parallel, but to break away from it being so severe, it's important down here at the base just to have a few things that are radiating from a center binding point. So it doesn't look um, so strict. And um, I think it looks modern but still looks like it could be in, I'm really from Maine, so this looks like it could be in a home this time of year uh, in Maine or where I am here up in the woods in North Carolina. So another negative piece. Thanks, Nag. So this container, uh, I think for fall and for Christmas, is one of my favorite containers. A beautiful wood box, foam fits in it just perfectly. When you cut it just right, you wanna make sure that you have um, room for some water um, so that when the customer waters it, that there's going to be a reservoir there for them. So again, same product, very, very same product. From Knut Nielsen, um, the, the angel vine and, um, I love to use the gray, but I always like to warm it up with something brown. Of course, Magnolia is gonna do that. Uh, the pheasant feathers, uh, crescent in shape and still has a classic look. A crescent is always classic, but it still has a negative nature. I've added a few little bulbs. These are actually hyacinth bulbs that I um, had in my refrigerator so I can get them ready to bloom. I love a little bit of blue around the Christmas time. So there are blue hyacinths that I popped in there as well. Um, the pods are from Knut Nielsen. They were, when I told them I was doing the design show, they were just so very generous to me. And so here it's same product, just a different look, allowing me bulk buying. What's your name? Mm -hmm. And in, in vignettes, I, I believe the, the younger generation, so I'm talking about millennials, really loves plants. So here I've placed these um, wonderful amaryllis bulbs and the bulbs that I've kept in my refrigerator so they can now be forced um, in a nice little garden like this. Still, it looks very, very vegative, but this can go right in the cooler. And if you can imagine this for a cooler where one side of it had this wonderful look that's highly transseasonal. One thing, I kind of broke a rule here and I did it because I kind of wanted to talk about it. This green right here is blueberry juniper. It's so pretty. It has a blue green foliage. And then the little things we call berries, blueberry juniper are actually it's cone. It's kind of like a leathery texture, but it's a gorgeous denim, denim blue. Sometimes it has a fragrance that um, I know only from experience that customers don't always like. It has a little bit of a pungent uh, scent to it. And so that is usually a foliage that I'll use outside um, because you don't smell it when it's outside. Nice little cluster of cones and then this little uh, cute little birch ba basket that's going to tie it all together. And so once you get this right up here. Now I think florists should be the trend trendsetters. And so I wanna speak on trend, that's this. This is the uh, the trend of, um, that was in the, <laughs> we get the right way here. This is the trend inspired, that inspired me from the Florist Review uh, Report. And as a trendsetter, I think one trend that can come back, I think we have an audience for it now, I'm real excited about it, is dried product. So when Knut Nielsen sent me all these wonderful, wonderful things, I just knew that this look would be something that if florists would start inviting uh, dry flowers back into their inventory and into their merchandise, that there's a whole new buyer for it. Uh, some people don't like synthetic flowers. I do, I love them, um, but 
I think if we try it. So I'm just asking you as trendsetters, let's, let's give it a go. Let's look at how dry flowers might have a resurgence. When I started in the eighties, uh, I started with dry flowers and those eucalyptus swags. It was, it was really something else. And um, I made a lot of money with dry flowers. So why not be the trendsetters and bring that back? Because the material is highly affordable and it's readily available. And so, oh my gosh, and it comes in such beautiful colors. So here we have a look for you and it's inspired by uh, territory from the Florist Review re uh, Report. I hope you like it. It's very vegetative in nature and this is classic me. This is how I like uh, my designs. So hope you enjoyed it. Now we're gonna have another design style. Nayeli is here, we work together and she's gonna take that uh, down for me. Now, um, the containers that we get are codified containers. They're so clever this year. So if that look was trend, trends have a little bit more um, lasting power. They stay a little bit longer. And there's then there's fad. And so there's some things that kind of blur the line. They're between fad and they're between trend. And I asked somebody once, and I believe it was Talmadge McLaurin, I meant to ask him today, did you say this to me? Because I'm pretty sure you did because uh, Talmadge McLaurin had worked on the early days of the um, Florist Review's um, trend report. I said, how, how do you know when things move on in trend? And he said, when you start seeing it at a drugstore. And at the time then, I believe it was Crow's he had introduced crows and owls into, um, and then you start to see that move on and into a different type of a market. That's when florists need to take a step back from that. So this look that I'm gonna to bring to you, thanks May, is um, a little bit of what I think is trend, but we need to decide as florists when it moves away from trend and moves into fad. So let's, let's talk about that. Um, one thing is with woodland. Now this thing I adore, and this was um, in my office here in North Carolina and then all my FTD containers came up, uh, were sitting on the table. And the, you know who liked this was the younger generation. And so I can't say that this container um, as designed by FTD wasn't just lovely, but I always like to have a backup plan. And so here, I really wanted the antlers to show a little bit more. So I have a ring of the boxwood that I cut right from my backyard. And then I made this little mound um, of carnations. This took me four minutes to make. And I just think it's adorable. So remember, if you get an order for a codified special, it needs to be filled exactly like that. But when you have the containers and you can do something fun like this and you can train somebody to make something like this in four minutes or less, I'm telling you, we can make some money that way. It's clever, it's cute, and it's just fun. Love this. So I want to talk about silhouettes now. Um, we're doing a lot of things with silhouettes here at Bottomley's. And so here's some lotus pods. I just put some uh, white paint on them and a little bit of glitter. It's carnations, uh, rose hips, and a little bit of spray roses. The foliage is Fraser fir, white pine, and a little bit of green cedar. And again, staying away from that triangle look, I always like to move things into another type of shape that has some more sophistication to it. And then here's the silhouette. Now we've seen the silhouette, silhouette on the container, a silhouette in the arrangement, and we're certainly seeing that as trend. And so I'm thinking that this is one that might be strong right now and we don't know where it's going to go but I um I do a lot of trend sighting for bottomlies and I'm noticing it's on a lot of magazines right now and so a great container and so easy to work with okay so Nordic uh, this is another one that is a codified special, and the sleigh has been around for a long time, and I uh, have an alternative design for it. 
uh, using the carnations and you know how they smell that clove fragrance that I just can't get enough of. And then I opted to add the snowflakes instead of the little um, Santa Claus hat and the little Santa Claus hands. And so I'll show you what I did with those in just a second. So the Nordic, it's still, it's still a sil silhouette, but it's really a Nordic pattern. And that's been Oh, I've been recognizing that probably the last four years that that's been in trend. So we got to watch for that one as well. Here. Yeah, the bulbs again. So here's the container that I adore, the wood box. And then I added some ribbon. If you can see it, it's the black and white check. Black and white is going to stay strong. A uh, little bit of red added to this particular ribbon came from um, Berwick Lion Offre, Lion Berwick Offre, yep, yeah, all three. And um, here's the, the beautiful um, bulbs um, that I, I just think that this is going to be such a fabulous arrangement when these start coming uh, blooming always adding plants remember the younger generation it has a thirst for them so we want to make sure we're using them in a very clever way and I think they'll learn a lot from just using these wonderful amaryllis bulbs and so all I did was band the ribbon around and again sticking to the pattern of the silhouette I just added the little um, snowflake right to the top and so this is very much um, wasn't this here get a preset now I have to try to remember where everything was this is very much like how my cooler would look um, when I had my flower business I wanted everything to look like it matched you sell more that way because when people see it's a full collection then they can say well this will look great on my coffee table and this would look wonderful as a center all right, so um, this is that FTD brings back again and again and again, and there's a good reason for it. The quality is spectacular. This was sitting um, on my uh, my desk along with all my other FTD containers, and everybody said, "What's going to happen to that when you're done with your show? What's going to happen to that? Is there is there?" Um, a way we can have <laughs> Naeli wants it, and so does Mrs. Bottomley. And so I want to show you an alternative that um, when I had my flower shop, I did a lot, and I did do it in this container too. And I was a, an FTD florist, and so if you make a little cluster in your hand of carnations, you, and you know you can use the white ones. Some of the reds are so so beautiful too. Um, the white ones are my favorite just because of the fragrance. So you make a little cluster like that. And then then I'm going to put them on. I learned this. I learned this from Pete. Pete does a lot of uh, peach salmon. Pete and I uh, work on um, that he um, does things in big old groups of things. And then we just tie it off like a little topiary. How fast and easy is that? And you can make a bow tie or just leave the streamers. I think the streamers are fine. And so then I have my greens from all around here where I um, live in North Carolina. Fraser fir. This is Fraser fir, and this is where it grows. Um, when I'm working in Maine, we use balsam. It has wonderful fragrance, but Fraser fir has the needles that go all around versus be being very flat. Um, in some of my work, I use Douglas fir, which I loved as well. Uh, noble fir we use. Um, pine, of course, is really available almost everywhere. But when we're working with um, the evergreens and you know you're going to pull all that tassel off the side the needles off the side and there you go you know what i forgot now. we don't need one pete will get after me anyway i'm always after him about not using a trash can and here i am pete throwing this all on my living room floor and so 
I think money, anybody who's ever heard me speak knows that I feel like money is either made or lost on the design bench that we have either we have bad habits, or maybe we don't talk about speed, but I know for me to be fast means that I'm, I'm making money. Now, somebody in boot camp also mentioned about talking more about um, talking more about how we price out arrangements. Now, the industry standard for pricing out arrangements is going to be three times on flowers, then you round up to the nearest dollar so that we can add easily. Some flower shops will go as far as um, a little bit more than that. And they might be 3.5. And then hard goods are supplies. So that's all the ribbons and bows and containers and foam, all that stuff are hard goods are usually 2.5 markup. And then we add 20% for labor. That will usually yield you a, 28 to 27% cost of goods, cost of your tangible items. And so with that in mind, I just like to know that I can train designers to be fast. And I only want to work with that number of 27, 28% cost of goods. And um, so what that Nayeli actually produced for a client in product development. So there's another silhouette. I could add another the deer ghost with that deer, or I could add another snowflake, but I'm just gonna tuck this right down in there. So I could do two. I'm gonna go in, that's too much. I just do one. So there's that adorable little ice jar or cookie jar with a silhouette. It still blends in with our theme of silhouettes, red, white, and beautiful greens. And here's that cute and fast and adorable little centerpiece, little topiary. All right, so fad. Now I want to move on to fad, the gnomes. So this is one I think is really short lived. Now I uh, worked with a florist last year and they sold a lot of these little gnomes and they take no time to make. It's actually an, an Oasis um, cone foam, but you could take an Oasis full brick and just shave it down into a cone shape too. That's fast and easy. And then just make the evergreens going up, excuse me, insert the evergreens going up into that foam. And so here he has little hands, little hat, and these, uh, and then one cute, adorable little pick. And so this, I truly believe, is bad. Now, remember I told you I would come up with something to do with those little, little Santa hat and mittens. So I had these carnations left over. So I made a little cone. You can see how cute he is. Where's his friend? That's his friend. You can see how cute he is. And he has his little Santa hat and the little hand. So my point of making this is to tell you that um, when we have things like this that we didn't use and we start to put them in a pile, you know, that little pile of stuff you're gonna use later. Um, and then the pile gets bigger, it goes into a box and then there's another box and there's another box and you're gonna use it up later. I think the rule should be use it now, not later because how fast is this? And you know how saleable it's in too, it is too. So I put this little Santa right beside the little gnome and that is my novelty look. And I think in a color, um, this is really fabulous. And so I want to get back to um, testing things out. So when I know how fast this, this little guy was, right? So he's, he's totally a, a, a fad right now, right? The gnomes are, I don't think they're going to stick around that much longer. So I'm not saying invest a lot in it, but maybe it's going to have one more year. And then I, I don't know where it's going to go from there, but I'd be really cautious about that. But this is Santa. So you know Santa's going to stay. And so this probably took me three minutes to make. And then why would I put this in a box to use up later? Because you know this just sitting on the counter is gonna sell so darn fast. And so cost of goods, you're gonna add up all your hard goods, you're gonna add up all your fresh flowers, mark up traditional for fresh is three to 3.5. Hard goods are uh, two to 2.5. And then we're gonna add the 20% labor. And that's what I wanna to speak to you about. That's why I only like to work 
um, with the cost of goods. Now, if this is going to be my, part of my Christmas and holiday special, these are always going to be available in, in the flower shop, then all I want to know is how fast we can make it and how much it's going to cost me. I don't want to talk in 20% labor. And here's why. Because a designer is going to say, all right, Annie, you want me to make that in 10 minutes and you're going to sell that for, I didn't cost it out, so just forgive me. I'm just going to use a round number of $50. You want to sell that for $50 and 20% of that's labor, that's me, that's $10, okay, and you want me to make six in an hour, uh, that's $60 an hour, and you're paying me X. You see how that's a problem? That's a real problem. And the way I explain that, and the way I explain it in boot camp is, yes, it's a rule of thumb, and we have to stop calling it a labor charge, because who ordered the flowers, who processed the flowers, who sold the arrangement, who made the arrangement, who delivered the arrangement, and who sat in the office and billed out um, the order after and did the paperwork and then paid the wholesaler. So that labor chart gets confusing because designers actually think it's their time making an arrangement. So that's why I only want to know what things are going to cost me. And if 20, if 27% uh, cost of goods, meaning if I'm going to sell this, wow, what? I didn't add it up either. It was just the stuff on the, my counter that I wasn't going to throw in that bucket of stuff I might use up later. And so 20%, 27% is the rule of thumb if you follow the traditional pricing strategy. So I did want to address that because it's it's been a question asked. And so that's how I do it. And um, when you come to boot camp and spend time with Janet and Pete and I, um, we have a whole cost calculator on how you how you can do that. And so it's really quite enlightening when we're all together at boot camp and, and we do that and people see that um, money truly is made or lost on that design bench. And I think with um, with some tips at boot camp, we can get you going in the right direction. Thanks, Nay. So there's trend. And I chose to use the, uh, the trend of um, territory. And then there's bad. My point with that was probably, probably the gnomes. And then there's, uh, see if I can do this gracefully here. Then there's um, tradition. Then there's the classics. And so the classics are the ones that are absolutely here to stay. Oh, looks even. Oh, Naomi and I, um, we are both thrift, thrift shoppers and I love vintage things. And so this still has the price tag on it, 50 cents. This darling little, little vintage holly dish uh, I think in Maine, I have the little platter that absolutely goes with it. It's another example of what I would rather have these tiny little containers around me all the time. So when I have that broken stuff, little bits and pieces of this, that, and the other thing, why not? This is highly saleable. And if I was working at my bench, my kitchen, if I was working there and I had these little scrappy pieces, I could have very easily just put them in a vase where I'm going to use it up later. But we know what happens with that bucket or that base of stuff that you might use up later. So here I've just taken a little bit of moss um, from Canoe to Nielsen and all my flowers came from um, Mayash in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'm just crazy in love with those hearts roses. I just love that petal count and how roughly they are. And so why not shop for vintage? I'm a vintage shopper. I adore vintage. And then please don't have that base of stuff that you're going to use up later because chances are in most flower shops that I go into in the back of their cooler, they have their vase from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then on the next Monday, they throw it all out. And so to me as a business person, I wanna see it used up because it's highly saleable and I'll fly right out the store. Ah, I love, all right, so here's the, um, <laughs> somebody, Joseph, oh, should I say your last name? He said he's guilty of that. 
<laughs> well, we got to admit it, right? And so, uh, Joseph, come to boot camp, and we'll we'll help you out with that. So here again, um, classic shape, a beautiful crescent shape, and. Remember the first look, the vignette that I did with all the, um, the silhouettes? Uh, no, that was the second one, right? Second one. Um, and it was red and white. You can see I usually do red or white. I'm not really one to blend red and white together. I will if you make me, but it's not really my favorite. I just have um, reds here. Reds in there their full capacity of color, capacity, full intensity of color, and then a shade. So we go from the red that's orange red to red red, blood red, and then to add black to a color, get a shade, so to burgundy. And so accenting this with the beautiful gold cones because there's gold in this lovely, um, lovely container. And so again, classic container, classic shape. and. Um, no way we have this made here. I didn't know I could see people typing stuff. This is fabulous. Okay, uh, let's see. Remember the design style that's my favorite, very, very parallel. And so um, Nayeli is gonna take pictures of all these so you can see them. Um, here's the burgundy carnations. Uh, with this is uh, rose hips, uh, some of the gold uh, ball ornaments, rounded ornaments, and then um, very economical and so gosh darn fast to make. And I love that it is so linear. Um, the greens are, everything is placed parallel. The greens are spraying out the side. This is Douglas fir, it's real feathery. Uh, I had never worked with it till this season and um, it smells like lemons, uh, evergreens with lemons too. They're making the spray out to the side. So it's probably three places mints of greens and then all these parallel placements. And so when I'm training designers, usually I want to start here because we're always radiating from a center binding point and it gets a little boring unless people understand this first. And so usually when I train designers, I start with vegative because when you start with vegative, you're gonna have uh, vertical placements, horizontal placements, very strict placements, just like things grow. And then you're also gonna have rambling placements, but very classic, so fast and easy. I wanna say I was trying to time myself and I wasn't killing myself working on this either. This took me six minutes to make. And so see what I'm saying? You can make a lot of money, change your design styles, very parallel. I like to start with a nice tight cluster and and then gradually, very rhythmically, go up, 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 up. And there's more distance away from each item. So tight down here. Oh, thank you. That somebody told me it was beautiful accent piece. Yeah. On top of the books. We did a preset. I think the books are holding up the picture. Yeah. In a minute. Started everything that way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about classics, right? So these are our classics. So here we have um, one of the codified specials. And so I put, put a little ribbon on the top and then the beautiful ribbon coming out the side. And that is from uh, Lion, um, Lion Ribbon. Uh, the Ponderosa cones that have been painted, not a shiny gold, more of a matte gold. I'm uh, remodeling a condo right now and I'm noticing that brushed gold is back in style in a big way, very classic. And I'm more to, I'm more to gold than anything that's chrome or nickel or um, anything bronzy. And so I was so happy to order my kitchen sink and have it be in brushed gold, also my cabinet knobs. And so um, I think gold is so elegant and it lends itself to these beautiful reds in such a nice way. Can you see now too how my vignettes fit together? So you have, oh, thank you, love the ribbon. Don't forget, that's Lion, Lion Ribbon. Um, comes in number 42. Um, so it, within my vignette, if you look at this one, it's burgundy carnations, the beautiful red roses, and the rose hips, and then the assorted greens. I think the only other thing might be, I, had some red spray roses too, that's it. So 
See the buying power you get with within each vignette. You're shopping for just those things rather than your cooler looking kind of hodgepodge, almost calico with all this stuff happening. Think in vignette form. So if this is a cooler, say a three door cooler, and you had one look that was the, the blues and the plums and blend in some fall colors with that and some browns and, and um, grays in that look. And then the middle section is your novelty section. We know how much that sells, um, how fast that stuff sells, right? Anything with a Santa and a snowman and all that's gonna sell so fast. And then the other cooler door just has these classics. And so here I've chosen, again, not to add the white. I just think it doesn't look as sophisticated when we do that. And so here I have um, that wonderful centerpiece and I'm angling it up. And when I was doing this, do you know what I was thinking of? This could easily be funeral work. This would be lovely, lovely on somebody's buffet, but it would also be lovely at a funeral. Remember, when we're doing funeral work, you are in charge of something so responsible, the last gift from a friend or a loved one to somebody. And so make sure that you're doing work that's highly stylized and you've, um, what, is it designed in? It's the FTD container. This is the um, the uh, one of the specials. Janet, she can tell me at the end um, which special this is, but this is one of the Christmas specials. So it's in a dish and it has that little adapter that goes onto the, the lantern and then it goes right down into the floral foam, very snug and very secure. And it's, guess what? It's in brushed gold. So um, we, we owe it to the folks at FTD that are sending these very trend forward things to us, highly saleable and in good demand because lanterns are another thing. They've been around for a while, but um, as the trend spotting I'm doing, they're gonna stay. So I don't think that is bad. I think it's tradition. This goes on the end. The same container, the brush gold container. And I thought it was painted glass when I saw it in the um, selection guide, but it's not. It's um, definitely metal. And so, yeah, I am going to, ah, let's see. Here I'm going to um, try to work with white and red. And the reason why I can do it is because of these, I don't know, they're tan carnations. I'm crazy about them. And I do love carnations. Remember, I'm from Maine and I have a, a market where people appreciate value. And if you were with me through virtual mini boot camp, we talked about what customers want and what customers want from us, what they want from Forest is value. And to me, that means product like carnations. Carnations last and last and last. And I love them, but I can't have anything that's ordinary. I have to look for these wonderful, wonderful uh, Victorian colors. Oh my gosh, when I went to Mayesh in Charlotte, they had some of those dirty pink ones. Gosh, I just love those, but I didn't get them. And we can't hear you when your back's to us. Oh, sorry. Is that better? Yep. Okay. So when I make hand tied arrangements, I like to start with a nice, strong center. This is going to be kind of a big one. It fits in the vase. But I like to start with a nice, strong center. And then I'm gonna work around that center. And so with this very green white, look how yummy that is, right? Ooh, yeah, Isn't that pretty? So when you have something that's so contrasting like that, um, and Pete is really good about this too, you have to get me there, you have to get me in between it. And so we'll, we'll have pictures so you can see uh, how this coloration works. That, 
when you're blending colors, you're going from this green white, it's like you're an artist and you have to pick up a little bit of another color and then sweep that color through by, by painting that color. And I, um, gosh, it was a long time before I could make uh, hand tied arrangements. I laced for so long, you know, that technique of lacing where you just crisscross the stems. I did that for so long that it was really a challenge for me to, um, to, to learn to, um, there's the rose hips, and that's kind of an orangey green, to learn to do this because I laced so long that my, it's like my brain wouldn't let me do it. And then uh, finally, I worked with a German designer, Greg Lersch. I don't know if you've, you've worked with him or if you've had any experiences with him, but he literally blindfolded me and said, okay, I'll tell you where the flowers are, you just reach and get them. Because I just was having a hard time making this spiral. And now it's like second nature. After I had that lesson with, um, with Gregor, I um, would go out for long walks with my kids and they would just bring me wildflowers and I would just practice and practice and practice. And now it's like second nature to me. I like groupings of things. I don't like to have, um, all dispersed throughout any design, the material. I like it to be in groupings. Uh, I think there's more impact that way. And I think the look of um, arra arrangements being evenly distributed sometimes has a bit of a dated look to it. So I'm blending now a little bit into, um, I'm holding it kind of loose, see that nice spiral? Um, I'm holding a little on the loose side too, uh, so that I don't crush these stems, but also because I want that look to be a little bit more random. Remember the tip from Pete, not one at a time. There's three at a time. Some more red over here. The spiral is staying. I think it's gorgeous. You like it, Nay? Nayali is um, works at Brownlee's with me. She's the other designer there. And um, Magnolia and the brown. Love adding brown to things. It's yummy, isn't it? Fine. Look at the tassels on that pine. See, it's all pre-cut. Remember when you're making uh, when you're making hand-tied arrangements, you're probably going to spend more time stripping the foliage than you are going to anything else. And so, isn't that beautiful? We have some cones. Is that too much? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then to tie it off with a zip tie. When uh, Janet, Janet said, we'll adapt your stage program, A Home for the Holidays, to, um, to this virtual version of it, I said, that is going to be um, so easy to do because I literally am in my home for this holiday session with you. Um, I want to talk about what's going on with, um, no, not politics, with um, coronavirus. And so if you read SAF Magazine, they just have made a statement that most of are very And um, that, that they really think the season is going to be good. And so if you were able to be open during Mother's Day, over 70% of florists that were um, filled out the survey from SAF cited that their holiday, their Mother's Day really was good. So I tied that together with a little zip tie. Uh, you can use tape and use all kinds of different things, but the zip tie works really well and you can do it in your, uh, your hand. And so there's that classic, beautiful container and uh, just a nice free formed hand tied arrangement. And I made myself add white, um, but it's just because these um, nice gray tones work that that together just nicely for me. There, doesn't it? This is go. I don't know if it has a front. Hey, 
And so if you're gonna have an open house for the holidays, I would still encourage you to do that. You're gonna to have to handle it a little dip differently. If open house has always been good for you, you have to know how many people can be in your store at any given time. And so maybe it could be invitation only, or maybe you have to extend it. Maybe it has to start earlier and go a little bit longer. But we really want to, people are looking for things to do. So if there's a way that you can do it and keep your staff safe, and keep your customers stay safe and you know that open house has always been a good thing for you then um, by all means try it but make sure you're doing it in a way where people can certainly be safe uh, another classic um, is the um, the boxwood tree and i just had to make it just because i live in a boxwood field so i was able to go right out in the backyard and clip all that wonderful boxwood and make this lovely um topiary tree. So that's on the Oasis Cone, and it sure, certainly is a showstopper. Burgundy, red, and gold, another beautiful vignette, and there's no reason why anybody's cooler can't look just as beautiful as my mantle here um, in North Carolina. And so I think for planning for the holidays, most people are optimistic about it. Wholesale houses are telling me that, um, that florists are buying a little bit less more frequently because there's so much unknown out there. But we do have now going on is this nine months of working with COVID and what's going on with the pandemic. So you do have some history that we have to act on. So look at your, your notes from Mother's Day if you were in fact op uh, being, you, you were in fact able to be open and then look for some patterns. Look to see who's in your store because a lot of florists are, are, are saying that there's a lot of young people that are finding flowers and they're looking for these arranging classes. So couldn't you do a hand tied arrangement, maybe sell a beautiful bucket or box of flowers and then connect it to a video where they could make a hand tied arrangement or a boxwood tree or a basic centerpiece. Remember that, that cute little arrangement with the deer that's just that mass that could be a child, you know, maybe some kids could take a little clinic and do something like that. And so I think the holidays can be good. I know we're missing a lot of our big ticket items, right? So we're missing the big weddings and events. They're coming back, but they're small. And so when we're missing the bottom line stuff, we really have to count on this holiday. And so make sure you have a network of people. Maybe you have a state florist association or other um, florists that you um, confide in or even other business owners. How are they going to look towards this holiday to be profitable for them? And so uh, this last issue of um, SAF's magazine, Floral Management, was full of wonderful ideas on how to survive the holiday and what other florists are thinking is going to be the trends for them. And so here we are here in North Carolina. So I hope you liked um, my trend, fad, and tradition. So if you have any questions, type them in the little box and I'll be happy to help you out with anything. And thank you for sharing some really gorgeous designs to help us all deck the hall halls this holiday season. Yes. Um, we do have some questions that came in. And um, as Ann said, if you have any questions now, type it in that chat box. Um, and just as a reminder, we will be posting photos, up close photos of the designs on FTDI um, afterwards. Um, we did have a question on the bulb piece. How did you attach the bulbs in that, in the wood box? In the wood box, um, I pierced it on a, with a very small um, skewer, like the kind you'd make a kebab with just a very little bit. I've done it for years, only one, because then when I place the greens, I have the greens come up around it. Make sure you're using a wood skewer too, because that wood, um, this very tiny, very tiny wood skewer and just pierced it a little bit. I've done it for years and the blooms still come out. And so that's secured down in. It has to be wood because wood, once goes down into the foam, it's actually in foam. You can do it in dirt, you can do it in foam. It's the same medium, right? It's something that stays wet, that lets that bulb get some nutrition. And we know that the foliage that you place down in around it, if it's placed so it encompasses the bulb this way, it helps it to stay nice and tight 
also, I did use foam. You can use dirt as well, but it's down into the container. It's not above because so, so often we use foam above the rim of the container. This was absolutely below the rim of the container, helping to keep that in that. And so that was, um, I did it in both of them and I did it the same way. Well, actually the one in the birch, can you pass me that one in the birch? It had root, these gorgeous roots. And so I had to let the roots hang out the side too. And that will absolutely send up more roots. It will not hurt this bulb. I got these bulbs from a company, another company I work for called Bloom Maker. They're great big, they're um, a Dutch company. They do a lot of hydroponic stuff. And so they're massively gorgeous bulbs. And these are white. They're gonna be white and these are gonna be blue. So can't wait to see that. All right, Good question. Uh, where did the gnome accessories come from, Anne? The gnome accessories, let's see, that's something that um, Nayeli actually um, had made for a client here at Bottomley's. Bottomley Evergreens is a major provider. It's where the largest family farm, I think, in the country. And um, Bottomley's provides evergreens to big box and also to... Um, uh, floral wholesalers as well. And so it was something that was designed for one of the clients. And so Nayeli now goes through product development, what I used to do. And speaking to that, the industry is so cool because you think of the jobs within a flower shop, right? So there's designer and sales and delivery and management and all, and all of that, maybe of greenhouses and there's some roles there. But you think about the other people on the design team, like Keith White, he gets to do the trend report and he's in it. He He's in uh, the Dallas showroom doing all these wonderful things. Uh, certain J Jacob McCall, he was retail. Now he works for um, a lot of uh, companies. I think we, he's with uh, Knut Nielsen now, uh, going to their trade shows and setting up their booths. And he's also a world-class competitor and he's on the team. Deb, oh my gosh, she's such a successful, Deb um, De La Flor, she's such a successful florist. But not only that, she's a world-class um, designer as well because she's competed in uh, World Cup. Ian Prosser, he was a traditional florist. Now he just does fabulous events. And so the, the industry is so cool. There's no holding you back. Just say yes. When your state florist association asks you, you know, will you help behind the scenes? Because I mean, I did it once and I was working beside Greg Alersh, who knew? So um, it, it's a wonderful industry. And I, I have had the coolest jobs because of this industry. And I'm just forever grateful. Um, really quickly, the lantern design that's on the mantle, that is, that FTD container is C3, the I'll be home for the holidays. C3, I'll be home for the holidays. It's lovely. Yep. Um, then we had another question. If you need to tie it off when you were doing the hand tied um, bouquet, you said it, if you need to tie that off and place it in a temporary water source, like an arrive alive foam in bag, won't the carnations break? Uh, yeah, and they might. So, and also um, tulips too. Um, we we want to make sure that they're not on the side. And so, when you're tying, so we, I wonder, are you worried that the the tie will break it off, or the container is going to break it off? Either way, if you make sure that the foliage that you're using, or maybe a ring of something else around the outside that has a real sturdy stem, and they're closer to the center and away from that. Another uh, one that I would worry about would be Asiatic lilies. You're gonna want Asiatic lilies to be right down in the middle because we know if they're towards the side, you're gonna have bruising and breaking. And so anything that you're concerned about, and I did notice, I love those tan, um, uh, carnations, and I'll post all the, the, the varieties. I have them uh, for you. But if you have that closer to the center and your real durable stuff towards the outside, like the roses with those really nice heavy stems, then that's not going to happen. Great. Uh, Eileen added to that. She said, because it was so beautifully spiraled. Oh, thank you. Wasn't it? Um, we've got another question. How did you get the gold ornaments to cascade from the cylinder vase? From the cylinder vase here. The, yep. Yeah, they're, um, they're clusters of three. They're clusters of three that come from the wholesale house. And then I just laid them on top like grapes and then twisted the wire like that. And because it is on wire, 
This went down into the foam quite nicely. You could add a wooden stick to that, but it held quite tightly. And it looks like a little grape cluster, doesn't it? Yeah, so that's all that is. And I, I, it's important to have some falling lines sometimes too, I think. All right, we've got another question and um, it might be more of an opinion. Um, somebody, when you were talking about labor and costing and things like that, somebody had asked why the labor cost has not changed over all these years when minimum wage has increased. Yeah, right. Minimum, at, in some states it certainly has and it probably will again. And so this is industry standard. It doesn't mean it has to be your standard. So I can only speak to what I did as a florist and made a lot of money and I can speak to industry standard. And so um, I invite you to come to FTD Bootcamp because then we go around the entire room and everybody talks about their pricing strategy because just because that strategy, my strategy worked for me and the traditional strategy might work for some other florists, we don't know what you're paying in wages and we don't know what you're paying in overhead. And so, and plus I've, I've looked at a lot of wholesale sheets lately to see what cost of flowers are because they are going up. And so in each pocket in region, uh, if you're downtown or if you're in a rural area, your overhead is going to be different. So for me, I wanted to address pricing. This is the dialogue that always happens afterwards. I'm happy to address it, but you can see why without um, having more one-on-one, -on -one, you have to know what your overhead is. And so when, when you come to boot camp, we have all kinds of spreadsheets and we even have them interactive on Excel where you can put in your numbers and find your profit and loss and where you need to be. Maybe your pay payroll is high, but your cost of goods is low. It's all a balancing act. It's like a puzzle to put together. And so um, there is a lot more to it to that. And so I agree. That's why I don't do the industry standard, but I do have to speak to it. And I did want to address that because it was a question that came up in another one of the workshops um, to please address pricing. And so there it is in a nutshell. And so for me, if I know I can be fast, boxwood tree, that took me 20 minutes. So you can't say 20% labor on that, can you? Because it's 20 minutes. So 20, and if that sells for the same price as maybe this one does, it didn't take me hardly any time at all. It took me 12 minutes to make that one. I, I am business person first, designer second. Because if I could make money and pay attention to what was going on at the design bench, because I knew how to sell and I knew how to train people to sell at the sales counter, but the design bench was where I knew I was losing money. And I had a consultant come in and said, oh yeah, you got a lot of overstuffing happening back there in the, in the um, design room and a lot of waste and dump and shrink. You get that all under control. And then I worked on my pricing strategy. It's not a one size fits all. So if your labor rate has to be more because you're paying more for minimum wage, then make sure number one, that you're designing things that are darn fast, right? You see how fast some of this stuff can be. And um, look at your numbers and come to boot camp. We'll talk about it more there. All right. Um, how many designs do you recommend to create a vignette? Or to create a vignette inside the cooler? Inside the cooler, um, inside the cooler, you gotta know your store's average um, sale. So if I'm just gonna pick a number, say your store's average sale is $50. So you know you're going to wanna cover that, but that's not everybody in your community, right? You're gonna have people that are gonna spend over a hundred dollars. And so within that vignette, you might start at things that are going to be the cash and carry sales like that the cute little stuff that you can make so darn fast for cash and carry. I, I, I learned to be very, very fast and never have that little vase and, um, of uh, leftovers. So I could always have cash and carry specials that I knew how fast we could make them. And then you work your prices up. So with each special, say the boxwood tree, I would offer that in three sizes. So if this is, uh, and I'm guessing, I'm guessing, forgive me, I don't know, but it's say if this one was, um, 69, then I would have 159 and 49, or I might have 59, 69, and 79. Remember, sometimes 
$10 isn't enough to get you very far. So once you get up into your higher price things, say you start at 95, 129, and 149. And I'm working all from a psychological pricing strategy that I learned many, many years ago, and it worked for me. So sometimes $10 in intervals to raise something, you don't get any size out of it. You don't get that many extra flowers. And so once you get up into probably over $60, you want to move it more in $20, $25 or $30 and up. All right. Um, I don't see any other questions, just lots of great comments on on Thank all you. the uh, amazing designs and uh, inspiration. I uh, love the great ideas. I'm going to plan my winter holiday designs tomorrow. Thanks for the inspiration. So tag uh, us, tag us on, um, on Facebook so we can see them. All right. Well, I just want to thank everybody for attending today's virtual design show. Uh, a recording will be available on demand on the FTD Mercury Network Florist YouTube channel. Our next FTD virtual design show is scheduled for Wednesday, January 6th. Uh, FTD education consultant, J. Keith White, AFD, will be sharing some design ideas and tips for Valentine's Day. So we just want to thank everyone for attending. Thank you. Have a great holiday, everybody. Bye.